Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high, and on yeah. earth peace, good will towards men. We, we praise thee, thee, we bless thee, thee we worship thee, thee, we glorify thee, we give thee thanks to thee, thee for thy great glory. O Lord, Lord God, God, heavenly King, God, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, Lord the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, God Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For Thou only art holy, Thou only art the Lord, Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord God, make us worthy of thy perfect love, that with thy deacon Nicholas Farrar and his household, we may rule ourselves according to thy word and serve thee with our whole heart. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom cries out in the street, in the squares she raises her voice. At the busiest corner she cries out, as she, at, at the entrance of the city gates she speaks. How long, O oh simple ones, will you love being simple? How long will scoffers delight in their scoffing, and fools hate knowledge? Give heed to my reproof. I will pour out my thoughts to you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called and you refused, have stretched out my hand and no one heeded. And because you have ignored all my counsel and would have none of my reproof, I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when panic strikes you, when panic strikes you like a storm, and your calamity comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Then they will call upon me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but will not find me, because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord, would, not, would have none of my counsel, and despised all my reproof. Therefore they shall eat the fruit of their way, and shall be sated with their own devices. For waywardness kills the simple, and the complacency of fools destroys them. But those who listen to me will be secure and will live at ease without dread of disaster. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The psalm appointed for today is the 127th psalm, which is found beginning on page 782 of the Book of Common Prayer, Psalm 127, which will recite together in unison. Unless the Lord builds the house, their labor is in vain who build it. Unless the Lord watches over the city, in vain the watchman keeps his vigil. It is in vain that you rise so early and go to bed so late. Vain, too, to eat the bread of toil, for he gives to his beloved sleep. Children are a heritage from the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is a gift. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior, are the children of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. He shall not be put to shame when he contends with his enemies in the gate.
Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Jesus said, Again the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down and put the good into baskets and threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Today we celebrate the Feast of Jesus <coughs> Farrar. I'll read to you a little bit about Farrar and uh, his community. He was the founder of the, of the religious community of Little Gidding in Huntingtonshire, England, which existed from 1626 to 1646. His family had been prominent in the affairs of the Virginia Company, but when that company was dissolved, he took deacon's orders and retired to the country. At Little Gidding, his immediate family and a few friends and servants gave themselves wholly to the religious observance. They restored the derelict church near the manor house, became responsible for services there, taught many of the local children, and looked after the health and well-being of the people of the neighborhood. A regular round of prayer, according to the Book of Common Prayer, was observed, along with the daily recital of the whole of the Psalter. The members of the community became widely known for fasting, private prayer, and meditation, and for writing stories and books illustrating themes of Christian faith and morality. One of the most interesting of the activities of the, of, of the Little Gidding community was the preparation of harmonies of the gospel one of which was presented to King Charles I by the Farrar family. The community did not long survive the death of Nicholas Farrar. However, the memory of the, of the relig religious life of Little Gidding was kept alive, principally through Isaac Walton's description in his life of George Herbert. He, Farrar, and his family did most of them keep Lent and all Ember Week strictly, both in fasting and using all those mortifications and prayers that the church had appointed. And he and they did like constantly on Fridays, did the like constantly on Fridays, and on the vigils or eves appointed to be fasted before the saints' days. And this frugality and abstinence turned to the, to the relief of the poor. The community became an important symbol for many Anglicans when religious orders began to revive. Its life inspired T.S. Eliot, and he gave the title Little Gidding to the last of his four quartets, one of the great religious poems of the 20th century. It's important to um, take note that what um, uh, sort of a, of the timing of Little Gidding, because of course um, Little Gidding came into being after a, a period of, of nearly a hundred years when the Church in England was in great turmoil, when England itself was in great turmoil, and when the Church was in great turmoil, turmoil, and where it wasn't exactly clear what it meant to be a Christian in the Church of England. Exactly, certainly it wasn't exactly clear how that was to be um, how your religion was to be practiced. But Little Gidding comes into being after the Elizabethan settlement and, um, when, um, there, and when the prayer book is, is now becoming well established, the prayer book the tradition is becoming well established, and, uh, the, and the medieval period, which is the period that in Sean's um, simplified history of the church is governed um, largely by the reality of the monastic communities, when the medieval period has come to an end, and the turmoil in the Church of England has yet, as I say, has yet to be de determined how it, how it will be lived out. And so what was happening at Little Gidding, it was in a sense where the church was, ex the, the, the community at Little Gidding was experimenting how the church should be. And um, that period, in, in Sean's simplified history of the English church, you know what, what happens after the monastic period, which lasts for, for about a thousand years, Afterward comes the parochial period, when parishes come into parishes come into their into their own as the central focus of the life of, of ministry. And Little Gidding is, in a sense, a kind of a precursor or an early experiment in what it might be. We can see in the practices of Little Gidding vestiges of monastic community practices, as well as what would become something like house church practice, as well as something of what would become 
like um, parochial practice, parish church practice. We can see all those little th th things sort of be working, being worked out at the community of Little Guinea, which would end up, in, in my simplified history of the, of the English church, at least, but the church throughout the world, I mean, why stop in my grandiose plan of things? It's a history of the, of the church throughout the world, um, would end up being uh, resulting in the centrality of the parish as the central locus of ministry in the life of the church, which is, of course, what we have now. But, you know, is the door closed? Like so many parishes settle for a kind of a really, really, not just a simplified history, but a very simplified existence. So many parishes are happy to be open, you know, on Sundays and at prayer Sundays, and the rest of the week tend to some pastoral things, and, uh, but not sort of do very much which is not what Little Gidding was experimenting with. Little Gidding, as I said, was experimenting with all kinds of things from, from monastic traditions to what would become parochial traditions to house church traditions. And when you look at a place like, dare I say, St. Mark's, you see the, kind of, you see the same thing happening. It wasn't all there at our inception in 1840, 1848. It wasn't all there, um, but it, it had to come into being as the church had to remember what it was like to, to uh, experiment with all these different inputs. Part, part of the Catholic revival, especially in places like this, was to say, to say oh, yeah, that's right, there are, there are things that we can do other than Sunday mornings, and there are traditions that we can reach back to, like house church traditions, which are, which are traditions from the early church, like the monastic traditions, which existed for a thousand years, and uh, we can reach back for, to those traditions and enfold those traditions in the life of our parish community. Not only in the way that they shape our, not only in the way they shape our worship, but also in the way they shape our outreach. And if you're wondering whether or not that was really the case about how outreach was shaped in a parish like this in the 19th century, just read about what the great Eugene Augustus Hoffman accomplished here during the 10 years when he was rector here, what the ministries of this place looked like when he was the rector here. It wasn't just that he established the celebration of the Eucharist on feast days, which he did, because at that time we still didn't have daily mass here yet, but he also established tremendously well well-structured uh, ministries of outreach to those in need, particularly to working men and women in the city around us. It was, it was uh, during this period in the 19th century and partly, partly driven by the Anglo-Catholic movement that the idea of what it meant to be a parish community was expanded. And, but it wasn't the first time that that had happened because we can see that imagination expanding even in the 17th century, when Little Gidding freed from the conflicts of the previous 80 to 100 years in the, in the English church and in England in general, uh, began to be able to experiment with what it meant to be a parish community. It's a marvelous thing to have a more expansive view of what it means to be a part of a Christian community. And to think that in a parish community, we can do that. One of the reasons we can do it is because we're an urban parish community where people actually are able to sort of just show up, might be inclined to show up, don't have to live their lives um, by, the, by the, the need constantly to be, to be in motion between one another place, often between home and work, which are separated by some distance. But to be able to be in a place where your place of worship can actually be not so far from your home. Maybe even, dare I say, for some of us, walking distance, right? Which makes it easier to allow that parish community to have an expansive place and role in your life. All right, little getting wasn't urban, that's a good thing. <laughs> but they can't have everything, can they? So um, anyway, it's a good thing for us to give thanks for Nicholas R and for his family for the people who, who experimented with this expansive view of what it means to be a Christian community during that period in England when it was so important
to discern what it was that God was calling the church to be again. And guess what we're in now as a time of history? We're in a time where God is calling the church to discern what it means to be in a, in a community of faith, a community that gathers and defines itself by its members and its members of the, define themselves by their membership in that community of faith. And um, let us pray that God will continue to give us the imagination and the capacity to imagine an expansive life of the community of faith that draws on ancient traditions and that is open to new ones as well. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church and the world. Almighty and ever-living God, who in thy holy word has taught us to make prayers and supplications, and to give thanks for all men, receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with a spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all those who do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly life. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and other ministers, especially Justin, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Michael, our presiding bishop, Daniel, our bishop, and Britt, Nora, Stephen, Nicholas, and Gordon, my priest brothers and sisters, who worship and work in this place and parish, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments, and to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. We beseech thee also so to rule the hearts of those who bear the authority of government in this and every land, especially Joe, our president, the members of the Congress and the courts, Tom, our governor, and Jim, our mayor, that they may be led to wise decisions and right actions for the welfare and peace of the world. Open, O Lord, the eyes of all people to behold thy gracious hand in all thy works, that rejoicing in thy whole creation, they may honor thee with their substance and be faithful stewards of thy bounty. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succor all those who are sick with the coronavirus and those who care for them all those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, who are struggling for justice that's been denied, and who are working to bring about an end to the sin of racism in our hearts and in our society, and all those beloved of this parish community who are sick or in need, especially remembering Chris, Sue, George, John, Mary Jane, Marlene, Marguerite, Mark, Ira, Nick, Bryce, Alex, Rodney, Howard, Richard, Margaret, Will, Lisa, Clayton, Liz, Livia, Barbara, Sam, Olivia, Alessia, Hannah, Rick, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. We pray as always for peace in our time, for an end to the war in Ukraine, and for an end to the gunfire that takes so many lives in this city. And we also bless thy holy name for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, especially those, all those who died from the coronavirus in the past day, and all those whose lives have been taken from them in acts of war and violence in recent days. Beseeching thee to grant them continual growth in thy love and service, and to grant us grace, so to follow the good examples of the ever-blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, of blessed Mark the Evangelist and of all thy saints, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant these our prayers, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Let us humbly confess our sins unto Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men. We acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, 
by thy law, who are in thee, against the side of thy majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent it, and are heartily sorry for these our disobedience. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may enter here and hereafter, serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins, to all those who with heart repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And with thy spirit. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Of your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. Pray, brothers and sisters, that this, my sacrifice and yours, may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord receive this sacrifice of my hands, to the praise and the glory of his name, both for our good and for that of all his holy church. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is meet and right so to do. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God, for the wonderful grace and virtue declared in all thy saints, who have been the chosen vessels of thy grace, and the lights of the world in their generations. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. All glory be to thee, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, for the thou of thy tender mercy didst give thy only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, 
who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many, for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty, with these thy holy gifts, which we now offer unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these thy gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, and we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness, mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, most humbly beseeching thee to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee, that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him, that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins we offer unto, to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Hallelujah. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. O Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy, mercy upon us. O Lamb, Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb, Lamb of God, that takest away the sins of the world, grant us thy peace. We do not presume to come into this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may ever more dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that takest away the sins of the world. Lord, I am not worthy that thou shouldst come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom. And 
be humbled is to see our Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. Peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.